Hello everyone. Welcome. Hello. My, hello. And welcome to Community Corner. My name is Mr. My name is Mr. Ryan Nicholas Gray. I'm your, I'm your co-host. My name is David Dwight Tiller. I'm the other co-host. With uh, our guest today is Mr. Tim Grimmel. Mr. Grimmel is one of the members of Oakland County's Board of Commissioners. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome my, my guest, our guest at this time, Mr. Tim Grimmel. Mr. Grimmel, thanks for coming down, sir. Well, thank thank you, you for having me, Ryan and David. It's great to see you again. Yeah, come. Now, please tell us about your background. Well, I was born and raised in the Rochester area. I graduated from Adams High School back in 1992. And after that, I went to the University of Michigan. Then I returned to the community and have been practicing law for the past eight years. I was elected to the school board in 2001 and just recently stepped down from the school board. I was elected to the county commission uh, in 2006. I'm serving in my first term and it became hard to juggle both my county commissioner responsibilities and my school board responsibilities. So I just stepped down from the school board after seven years a couple of weeks ago and I'm continuing to serve as a county commissioner. And, and tell us about, your, tell us about your, your family. I have, uh, I, my dad passed away uh, about eight years ago. My mom is still around and still lives in the Rochester area. She lives in Oakland Township where I uh, grew up. And my brother, uh, I only have one sibling, my brother, and he lives in Japan where he's uh, married to a woman there and they have two daughters together. Okay. In fact, my brother and his family are currently in town visiting. And tell, and tell us, what schools did you go to? Uh, well, after uh, I graduated from Adams High School, I went to the University of Michigan, and while at U of M, I studied economics and political science as an undergraduate. Uh, then I got a master's degree in public policy from U of M, and then finally I got a law degree from U of M. David? I'm so sorry for your father. Oh, well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. And My what, question me is, me when did you father. became interested in politics? Well, that's a good question. Um, I guess I've, I wouldn't. I guess I shouldn't say I've always been interested in politics. But going back to middle school or maybe even late elementary school, I think I had some interest in politics and became increasingly interested in politics through high school. And then when I really started getting involved in politics uh, was when I was in college. I my brother was working in Lansing at the time. And, and my brother was working for the Republican Party in Lansing, although I'm now a Democrat. And my brother knew through his work in Lansing a person who was running for the state senate as a Democrat from Ann Arbor. And my brother, even though he was a Republican, introduced me to her. And I started volunteering on her campaign. So that's how I got started in politics. Very interesting. Hi, Ann. Thank you, David. Now, Mr. Grimmel, how did you arrive at your current at your current career, career choice? Well, uh, in terms of my career, which is really uh, working as an attorney, uh, it's a good question. Uh, and I've I've always enjoyed writing and speaking, and based on that, a uh, career as an attorney seemed like an appropriate fit in some ways. But I have to admit that at first, the law itself didn't seem terribly interesting to me. So it did take a lot of consideration on my part to decide to go to law school. And after going to law school, I learned to become more and more interested in the law and have enjoyed it ever since. So that's how I became an attorney. Uh, in terms of being a county commissioner, I, I got involved in school affairs. Actually, while I was still in law school, there was a bond proposal to build a new elementary school in the Rochester School District. And while still in law school in Ann Arbor, I volunteered in support of that bond proposal. Uh, every weekend, I came back and helped support that bond proposal. And then after that, some people suggested I run for the school board. And as a school board member, I enjoyed working in, in that capacity in the community and decided I'd run for county commissioner a couple of years ago. David? Thank you, Ryan. What steps did you take to become, or I mean to begin, involving yourself in politics? Well, the, the, the first thing I did, like I mentioned, was volunteer on that state senate campaign, which was way back in 1994. I was 19 when I first started uh, volunteering on that campaign. 
And uh, that was the first thing I did. And then the following summer, I applied for uh, various internships in Washington, D.C., and decided to go and work as an intern for Congressman Dale Kildee. Uh, so that's what I did the following summer. And the summer after that, I worked on Congressman Kildee's uh, campaign as his field director. Uh, he used to represent Rochester and Rochester Hills, as well as Pontiac and Waterford uh, in the 90s, but then his district was changed and he now represents Flint further north to the Bay City area. So those are the, are the basic things I did early on when I started to get involved in politics. Um, but as I mentioned, I also then first served on the school board as an elected office before running for the county commission a couple of years ago. Wow, it's really interesting. Ryan? Thank, thank you, David. Mr. Grimmel, did you run for any 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 any, any did you run for any offices during during your school years? Y you know, I did uh, not any not any public offices, but I did run for a couple of student council kind of offices. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, I ran for the position of student representative to the school board from Adams uh, and was elected to that and served as the student representative from Adams High School to the school board my senior year. In fact, a woman who I served with on the school board was on the school board way back then, Darlene Janulis. She served on the school board for 16 years, and so I actually served with her both as a student representative and as a school board member. And then in college, I ran unsuccessfully for the student assembly there, uh, although after that, I was appointed to the student assembly at Michigan. David? Thank you, Ryan. Please tell us about establishing a, a campaign. Well, establishing a campaign is a lot of work, um, but it's not very complicated. It's not exactly rocket science. It, campaigning for the school board and the county commission is, is more or less the same. It's, it's really about a few things. It's, it's about raising some money so that you can send out mailings to voters telling people about yourself as a candidate. Uh, it's also about going door to door, not so much with the school board, but especially the county commission. Going door to door to voters' houses to introduce yourself as a candidate is very important. And those two things are really what it's all about. One has to also respond to newspaper questionnaires and go to the League of Women Voters candidate forum and things like that. But really, primarily, it's all about going door to door to different households where voters live and introducing yourself and also sending out a couple mailings to people letting them know about you. Wow, very cool. Ian? Thank you, David. Now, Mr. Grimmel. How many months did you take to prepare for uh, prepare in this campaign? Well, I'm, I the campaign. I, I guess I really got underway with my campaign a couple months ago in May, doing various things on it, and then I'll continue to campaign through the election in November. So this year's campaign will probably be about six months, give or take. Um, but as, as I, the past couple of months haven't been terribly intense. I've done some campaigning. But I think the next three or four months will be a lot harder work. More more door to door work more more frequently. David? And Ryan, how did you raise money to run for office? That is always the worst part about running for office. It's I find it very awkward and difficult to ask people for money. It's it's I think most elected officials probably hate raising money the most. It's tedious, it's awkward. Uh, and I don't enjoy it. I've typically raised money by mailing out a letter to friends and acquaintances and people I've met through the years, telling them that I'm running for a given office, telling them why I'm running for the office, and asking for their support in whatever way, whether it's volunteering, whether it's contributing money, whether it's putting a yard sign in their yard. And I've been very fortunate in that a lot of people have responded very kindly with generous contributions to my campaign. Wow, very interesting. Ryan? Thank you, David. Uh, Mr. Grimmel, how much money does it, is needed to run a campaign? Well, it depends on the race and the year. Um, this year, I don't have a primary opponent. I only have a general election opponent in November. So it won't cost as much as the last time I ran for county commission when I had both a primary campaign during the summer as well as a general election campaign. 
Um, but the last time I ran, I think the total amount of money it cost me was approximately $30,000. Uh, and I wasn't able to raise all of that money, so I, I put in some of my own money into that campaign as well. This time it shouldn't cost as much, like I said, because I only have a general election and hopefully I'll be able to raise uh, all or nearly all of that amount of money, however much it'll cost me this time. David? The question may really shock you, okay? <coughs> did, you, did you have any spe special election celebration when you won your bridge on the Leicester Community School Award? Well, that's a good question. You know, often candidates will have a, uh, an election night party to celebrate, hopefully celebrate, assuming that they win. Of course, when people plan an election night celebration, they don't know at that point whether they win or lose, So they, but they typically still do it to bring all their volunteers together and thank them by having food available and, and a little party. Uh, I did do that the first time I was elected to the school board. Uh, when I ran for re-election to the school board, I, well, there was also a celebration that we had. I, I was working very closely with another school board member who was running for re-election, and we did have an election night celebration then too, come to think of it. Now, when I was elected to the county commission two years ago, though, did I have a, I, you know, I did have a small get-together, actually. Uh, my mom hosted a small get-together that night of the election where we had volunteers from the campaign come over and it wasn't a big to do, it wasn't a big party, but it was a nice little get together so I could say thank you to people who worked hard on my campaign. To me, it's really really interesting. Ryan? Thank you, David. And Mr. Gamel, what did you do in your role on the Rochester School Board? Well, it was a seven-year term, and so there were lots of issues that came up during those seven years. When I first got on the school board, the district was in a very difficult financial position. Our cash reserves were very low, and we had to make some very steep and deep budget cuts when I first came on the board to make sure that we got the district back on sound financial footing. And so my first couple of years on the Rochester School Board, two or th even three years on the school board, were not much fun because it mostly involved cutting the budget, which is never anything anybody wants to have to do. Um, but we successfully did that. We put the district on better financial footing. Uh, my fourth year on the board, my colleagues uh, chose me to be the school board president, and that ended up being a challenging year in a different way because the superintendent at the time announced that he was retiring. He had turned 65 or just about 65, and he announced that he was retiring. And so the school board had to do a search for a new superintendent candidate. And so we hired a superintendent search firm to look around the country for people who would be interested in the position. And ultimately, we hired a person who had served as a superintendent in Brighton, Michigan for a number of years. And he's our superintendent now and is doing a great job. So I think the proudest accomplishment I have since being a school board member is being a, a very important part of the process that hired Dave Pruneau as our superintendent because he's doing a great job. And, and then secondly, putting the district on sound financial footing is another thing that I'm very proud of because right now the district has a very large amount of cash reserves. We're in a very stable financial position. We'll always have challenges because the state funding is so uncertain for schools, but we're in a very good place right now financially and in terms of the <coughs> district's leadership. David? And Ryan? What were your personal goals as you worked for the families and students in Rochester, especially me and Ryan? Well, it's the, the best part about being on the school board is working with students, interacting with students at, at buildings, as well as the staff. The, the teachers in our buildings are very caring, very concerned people. And of course, the parents, by and large, are very engaged in their children's lives, very active in their students' education. And it's really the students, the staff, and the parents who make Rochester such a terrific district. I've always tried to be as focused as possible on student education. And so certainly stabilizing the district's finances was important, but I've also tried to focus on reducing administrative overhead in the district and funneling as many resources as possible to the classroom. 
As part of that, we've tried to address the needs of all of our students, whether they're students who are taking AP classes and are college bound, whether they're struggling academically, whether they're your typical student, whether they're a special education student, everybody in the district has been very important to me, all the students' needs, and I've tried to make sure that the district addresses every and each student, no matter what their needs and goals in life are. What do you mean? Well, there are, dis there are students in our district who have different needs, and we have some, some people in the, in the school district and in the community who have tried to get the school board to focus on only one certain segment of students. Uh, sometimes they want us only to focus on those students who are taking advanced placement courses or want to go to the top colleges in the country. Sometimes they want us to focus only on students who are struggling. And it's always been my position that we need to meet the needs and the goals of each and every student, no matter, uh, uh, no matter what they're focused does on. Does that mean disabilities too? It absolutely does. As I, as I mentioned, and thank you for, for being a little more specific, as I mentioned, it includes special education students. And I'm very proud of the special education program in the Rochester School District. The special education is such a broad term, it can mean lots of things. But it includes people with physical disabilities, it includes people with mental disabilities, it includes autistic students, it includes students with speech impediments and speech problems. Um, so it includes a whole bailiwick of students with special needs. And I've tried to be very supportive of special education throughout my years on the school board, and I'm very proud of that. I think that the Rochester District has a very terrific special education program that has by and large done a very good job of meeting the needs of students in our district. I, I myself incidentally had special needs when I was a young person. I had a very serious speech problem when I was young and uh, at first people didn't know if I'd ever be able to speak at all. I uh, ended up taking speech therapy from uh, age two and a half or three uh, all the way until I was uh, nine or ten years old and uh, I went to speech therapy three times a week and I, I have some idea as a result of what it's like to struggle with physical, mental, and emotional you know, challenges. Like me, when I was born, someone told me I would never speak. When I got, my first word when I spoke was the opposite of the word of wisdom fatal. Mm. I said we, I said backwards. It came out funny. I mean, Debbie is hysterical <laughs> when I stand forward. I think mean, it's the best I ever said. I'm sure he was very happy that you spoke the word backwards or forwards. I'm sure he was thrilled yeah. to hear it. I, I have a question? Yes, I do. Mr. Gamel, please tell us how your political goals and change to including running for a countrywide office. A countrywide office. Countywide. Oh, countywide. Um, oh, office. I was going to say I don't have any plans to run for a countrywide <laughs> office. In fact, I don't have any plans to run for a countywide office per se. The the county commissioner seats are are divided by district, and so each county commissioner represents one part of the county. My district is all of Auburn Hills, part of Pontiac, and part of Rochester Hills. So I don't represent the whole county, but. Obviously, all of us on the county commission deal with countywide issues, and we try to keep, at least I think most of us, try to keep the interests of the whole county in mind and not merely the interests of our one part of the county. And <coughs> I'm not sure I have a, a clear explanation for why I decided to run for the county office, other than the fact that it's very clear, and it has been clear now for a number of years, that our region faces some very unique and specific challenges. The economy recently has gotten very difficult, as I think we all know, but it's been clear for five to ten years at least that we needed to diversify our regional economy here. We've been so dependent on the auto industry for so long, and it's been, I think, clear that we've needed to diversify our economy here so that we're no longer dependent on one industry and no longer subject to the risks that come with that dependence. Who, who will help us on that? The, the county has a program called the Emerging Sectors Initiative and the program is focused on recruiting businesses in economic sectors and business areas that are growing rapidly. Those include certain healthcare fields, 
Uh, it includes certain technological fields and computer fields. And it focuses on 10 of these sectors and tries to recruit businesses from these sectors here so that we have industries that are growth industries here and that are not directly dependent on the auto industry. We have, we have a lot of assets in this region. We have some very skilled people who have been working in the auto industry for a number of years. We have great hospitals. We have great universities. We have good uh, transportation infrastructure in terms of the number and size of our freeways. Unfortunately, they're not terribly well cared for right now. Our roads need more investment in them. But we have a lot of positives in this region that we can build on to bring new companies here and to help us grow economically. I, in your opinion, who do you think is good for us for our state, Obama, Hillary, or McCain? Well, I, I've been a Barack Obama supporter now for some time. I've been supporting Barack Obama since the fall. I think that he has the right vision for our country. I think that one of the biggest challenges facing our country right now and in the past several decades has been economic inequality. The middle class has been shrinking in our country while the rich have gotten richer and the poor have gotten poorer. I think that in terms of his policy priorities, Barack Obama has the right vision for what it's going to take to help grow our middle class and help people who are struggling make the middle class and help those who are currently in the middle class maintain a middle class lifestyle. So that's why I support Barack Obama. But I have to say, I like John McCain. You know, in elections past, it's often been said by people that people have been forced to choose the lesser of two evils. I think in this election, it's the opposite. I think we have two very good candidates, both John McCain and Barack Obama, right. are very good people, first of all. They're, they're of sound character. They're in politics for the right reason, because they care. They're intelligent, they're thoughtful, and they're honorable people. And I think they do have some honest policy uh, disputes between the two of them, but I think either one of them would do a good job being president of the United States. My question is for you. Please tell us, oh, please tell us what made you decide to run for country commissioner. Yeah, I, I started talking about that a little bit earlier, but I, I'd like to expand on that because our region here does have some serious challenges and has had them for some time. Not only the current economic difficulties, which again I think have been brewing for some time because of our over-reliance on one industry, but our region also has been divided for a very long time. It's been divided geographically, it's been divided racially, it's been divided economically in terms of some areas being very poor and others being wealthy. And I'd like to see us push for more regionalism in the area. We as a region are either going to succeed or fail as a whole. Nobody's going to prosper in Metro Detroit in the long run unless Detroit succeeds and unless the whole region succeeds. When, when you talk to people outside of Michigan and when you talk to people outside of our country, out of, outside of the United States, they don't know where Oakland County is or where Western Wayne County is or where Macomb County is. They know of Detroit. And if our region's going to succeed, including Oakland County, we need to make sure that our region is thought of well and our region is associated with the city of Detroit. If we want to attract businesses here, if we want to attract educated young people here or even keep the young people we have here, we need to make sure that we have a vibrant central city that's going to attract those people to this area. And so one of my primary goals is to make sure that we pursue regionalism and that we make sure that we all succeed together. I got five minutes left. Any questions for our guest team? Yes, I do. Mr. Gravel, what sort of support did you need to set up a function as a, as a candidate? I, I'm not sure I understand the, the question. Can you repeat Could it? Could you repeat that, Ryan? Sure, I'll try. I'll go very slow. What, what support, sort of support did you need to set up and the function as a candidate. Oh, I follow you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, as I alluded to earlier, one of the necessary things to do as a candidate is to try to raise money. Uh, it's not fun. I don't think anybody enjoys it. Um, but I've tried to uh, keep track of past supporters. Um, and, so, and, and that's not just, though, in terms of financial fundraising. Equally important is, is people who are kind enough to volunteer on the campaign. 
And so what I've tried to do is, is keep track of people who have supported me in the past so that I can ask them to volunteer on my campaign, going door to door with me, for example, or helping me put up yard signs. Uh, some people have contributed money to the campaign. Um, but really, volunteer support is just as important, or maybe even more important, because if you have people who can go door to door and cover territory that way, <laughs> it's less literature that you have to mail in the mail, for example. And so I always say that if I had to choose between volunteers or money, I'd rather have the volunteers because if you have enough volunteers, you don't need very much money. And uh, the other thing that's important to do on the campaign, of course, is to make sure one responds to media questionnaires so that newspapers have information about you. There are various groups that get involved in elections, whether it's business groups or environmental groups or labor unions. So I've always tried to respond to their questionnaires so they know where I stand on the issues. And I know I'm not going to please everybody because obviously some people are going to agree with my views and others aren't. But I do think it's important that people know where I'm coming from and can make up their own mind whether or not to support me. And and I, I want to skip a couple of questions on mine because a few of them we have too much time left off. All right. How long is your tomb on this board? That's a great question. It's only two years, and so I was elected in 2006, and I'm already up for re-election in 2008 this year, and that's true of all the commissioners. All the commissioners are up every two years at the same time. It's just like uh, the United States Congress, same thing, or the State House here in Michigan. And, you know, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the system. I, I, on the one hand, I think with county commission, it actually works fairly well because our campaigns for county commission aren't that intensive. So we can still focus on being county commissioners. In the case of Congress people, I often wonder how they're able to focus on their job in Congress while having to run for re-election virtually constantly because a congressional campaign is so intensive that they literally get elected and they have to almost start their campaign uh, immediately. So I think for Congress it's a bit difficult. Um, for county commission, I think two-year terms work fine. Well, David, we're almost, we're almost out of time. Okay. So I'll ask, I'll ask you one more question. I'll ask you one question. I'll ask you one question. I'll do this question right here. How about, how about this one? Does a county commissioner receive a, sal re receive a salary? A county commissioner does. Um, school board members in some districts receive some pay, although in Rochester, our, our, our school board members didn't receive any money, literally no money at all. Um, so as a school board member, I didn't get paid anything, but as a county commissioner, uh, I get paid uh, approximately $33,000 a year, uh, and I also receive health care benefits. So being a county commissioner does pay, to answer your question. Well, I am okay, well with the I end, uh, I'm say, and Nicholas uh, Gray, thank you, th thank you for joining us today on Community Corner. Well, thank you, Ryan and David. It's been a pleasure being here. Before we end, Ryan, I'm say, we will post a website for you people where people can go to check for further for information, the website once again is www.oakatgov.com slash b o c slash. My name is David Dewitt Taylor. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Team Kumel, coming down. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Great, I'm David Taylor. I'm Flow Director Aaron Connie Catso. Thank you, and my name is Ryan Nicholas. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Community Corner. Community Corner. Community Corner. I'm David Taylor. It's 2008. Start fighting, people. I'm Mr. Ryan Nicholas. Great. Hoping you and yours have a wonderful good afternoon. Good, good, goodbye, folks. Next month, August. August. Bye, folks. Bye, bye.